Hey guys, Matthew, and welcome to another episode of the 1% of Array class. So in the last episodes, as well as also in my recent comment section, uh, when it came to Delirious Farming result videos, a lot of people have been basically telling me two things. First off, they would like to know money-making methods that they can do completely solo, right? Which doesn't need any help from anybody. Second off, people are looking for money-making methods that don't require an incredibly good PC because of course 100% Delirious full juice maps will require a decent computer to actually feel decent. And another thing is they're, they're actually asking me for methods of making currency that don't have any gray areas such as multi-boxing and everything like that. So today the method that I'll actually be talking about is something that uh, takes these three little caveats and completely uh, ignores them and we are going to be talking about something that everybody can do there's going to be no real investment whatsoever required to actually start doing this. And not only that, uh, it's something that you can do completely by yourself without any teammate, without a good computer. And best of all, if you're somebody who hates the Atlas, who doesn't actually enjoy this whole system of, you know, the Conquerors and Cyrus and all that, you can bypass all of it uh, with this method. And today what I'll be talking about is boss killing. So, is boss killing really that good? Well, a community member of mine made three mirrors completely by himself in the first four days of the league boss killing. Today, I want to explain how he did this, uh, basically what the money makers are when it comes to bossing. Now, a quick disclaimer before I get in the, the whole, you know, video subject. The thing about bossing is that it has, it, it basically has a very short life like like life lifetime it dies very quickly within even the first like five ish days in the first week of a league it's already dropped down to like two percent of how good it is in the first few days so this is a method this is a strategy that you're going to be using to try to maximize the absolute crap out of how much money you can make in the first initial weekend of a league or in the first like four or five days of a league and after that if you're going back to work and all that or whatever uh, or you're just gonna not be playing a whole lot after the first initial weekend or so on Well, you're already gonna have a big pile of currency that you can always come back to whenever it comes to you know Making your juicy mapper or just like progressing through uh, the game afterwards Whatever it is you're gonna have a lot of money to play with if you do this properly So in today's video, I'll be telling you about what I mean when I say properly um when it comes to bossing and obviously where the money comes from and why bossing is so op and how the guy made literally three mirrors by himself in four days so let's talk about it the bosses that i want to focus on today are basically as i mentioned we are completely ignoring the whole atlas what we're actually going to be focusing on is shaper and elder um why because first off they are fragment based bosses now we could also include uber aziri but uber aziri is going to be more meta dependent while shaper and uber elder are always going to stay just as powerful league after league after league now in a more melee meta where uber aziri's gloves and and uh you know axes are very very good that's a different story and it's not like i'm completely uh you know ignoring it from the equation it's definitely a possibility but if we're going for consistency shaper and elder is what we want to be talking about and of course uber elder uh cortex is in the discussion chayula is also in the discussion but today i'll be focusing on shaper and elder you can apply what i'll be saying about these two bosses to literally any other boss in the game and it's pretty much going to be the same the way that you'll go about finding out you know is it profitable or not so let's get right into it why is bossing so good okay well first off let's talk about the elder guardians the elder guardians all have these pretty much 2c items which are absolutely worthless right and they share the same mod pool it's actually the tile set of the arena that determines the loot when you kill a guardian uh so whenever you enter the guardian what the what the arena looks like is going to dictate what kind of items are actually possible to drop now this is not something that you can influence in any way shape or form so you just have to deal with it um so let's talk about an item which is, you know, pretty okay. It's not an incredibly good sword, but it's not bad either. Let's talk about Growwood Shank. Growwood Shank is probably an item which right now, if I was to pick up on the ground, would have a hard time selling for 5 chaos, unless I have an incredibly good roll. Now let's look at Growwood Shank at the start of a league. Okay, so of course this is a PoE Antiquary, which is the website I use to have a look at all the past prices of different items in different leagues. We have the prices in Chaos and Exalts and whatnot. Um, 
So let's have a look. In Heist League, because we can't do this for um we can't do this for the current league ritual because unfortunately this is only going to be added at the end of the league. So what we could do is look at it on PoE Ninja, but PoE Ninja typically doesn't log the first couple days uh, because there's not enough information to actually come up with a, an, uh, an accurate price that would be considered, um, what's the word that they use? Uh, high confidence, if you will. All right, so Grelwood Shank at the, in the first few days of Heist, on the second day of Heist League was 80 chaos. 80 chaos for this one C item. Literally, for the rest of the league, it's a 5C item, and at some point even dipped down to less than 2C. Look at that, 2 Chaos. But in the initial start of the league, 80, all right? Now, I'll be basically going through a, f a few different items from a few different bosses. Uh, let's talk about Elder. Elder has this bow here called the Hope Shredder. It's not a very good bow, but it's a good way. It's, it's a good bow to get started, basically. Uh, again, an item which is absolutely worthless. Now, let's look at the price of a Hope Shredder in the start of the league. 130 chaos right now as low as as little as five days into the league six chaos so for the first like three to four days we are talking about 100 100 plus chaos 85 chaos you know went down to about 50 c after a couple days still very good payout for actually uh, for for something that that's technically worth nothing for the rest of the league, right? Because those are not your big money makers. All right, let's talk about some of these Shaper Guardians. Guardian of Phoenix has this thing called the Eye of Innocence. All right, price of the Eye of Innocence for the first couple days of a league in Heist League, three hundred chaos. Now, if you look at that in Exalts, that is four Exalts, and a mirror at this point of the league in the first for, in the first few days is anywhere between like forty and sixty, seventy Exalts. So. I'm not saying you're going to be able to drop like 15 of those and buy a mirror, but you just drop an item which for the vast majority of the league is literally 5 chaos, and what do you know? It's worth 4 exalts. Okay, let's talk about another one real quick. Hydra has Snake Pit, a pretty decent ring. 200 chaos. Rest of the league, 3 chaos, okay? Uh, speeding it up. Guardian and Minotaurs, an item that's even worth like even less than some of these items because some of these actually have a use. Brain Rattler. Just a regular, pretty much lightning slash physical mace, all right? Start of a league, 25C. Rest of the league, 1C. So even these really, like, you could say crappy items that are absolutely awful have a lot of value. And this is not the only thing I want to talk about. Let's look at even, you know, Chimera. Chimera doesn't really have any juicy drops, but even Obscurantis starts off at 60 Chaos. Goes down to, you know, goes down fairly rapidly because, again, it's not a super sought-after item, but 60 Chaos, right? That's like, that's like an exalt for an item which nobody really wants past the first day or the first few days of a league. All right, let's talk about Shaper. Let's talk about Shaper's most common drop. Uh, I think the most common drop, or at least on par with the boots, and that is going to be Shaper's Glove, Shaper's Touch. Shaper's Touch, start of a league, 200 Chaos. This league, there were over two Exalts when Grimro killed Shaper and dropped them, and that was on the second day of the league. Two Exalts for an item that the vast majority of the league is absolutely worthless, okay? So I hope you're starting to understand why this is so incredibly good and i'm only starting there's a lot more to talk about now let's talk about bases this league and actually in, in quite a few previous leagues bleed bow gladiator has been a go-to for a lot of people for leveling uh what they want is a bow which can get the 100 percent more damage with bleeding which is an elder bow right that's what's required so if you look at elder bows right now pretty much any of the elder bows are pretty worthless right they're not worth a whole lot citadel bow on the second day of a league, for an elder eighty-three citadel bow, four exalts on the second, on the early in the second day of the league, right? Four exalts. Any of these other bows, pretty much any of these other elder eighty-three plus bows, which is what's required to roll the mod that I spoke about, one plus exalt. These half decent bases that are not super good, but that are half decent, two to three exalts. Now, this goes down, like I mentioned, incredibly, incredibly fast. I mean, you can see the peak, and then it just, just straight down, straight down. No value whatsoever, right? That's just what's going to happen, and this is in the last seven days, so you can imagine before that it was even worse. But this is what happens because as more and more people reach the end game, these bases become more and more available, therefore less and less pricey, okay? So you want to be 
uh, as fast as possible to get to these, which I'll mention a little bit later in the video how you can do that. Because remember what I said, you can ignore the entirety of the Atlas mechanic when you do this. Um, but I'll get back to this a little bit later in the video. Another example, Shaper Amulets. Most Shaper Amulets, 80, uh, 85, 86 or so, uh, at the start of the league are one exalt. Now they're like 10c each, right? At the start of the league, one plus exalt. Easily for any of these bases because they can all be turned into onyx with a vendor recipe which is any of these amulets with um pretty much a um one one gem of each color so blue green red gem it's going to turn it into an onyx so any bad base even if it's say for example like a power amulet or something right the really or a coral amulet you can just turn it into an onyx so one plus exalt for any of these which as you can see are pretty much worthless at this point in the league and we're only two weeks in it's not like the, the league has been going on for months it's only two weeks in but at the start of a league these are incredibly incredibly pricey so let's talk about how you're actually going to go about farming these bosses so fast well uh the first thing you want to do is obviously start with a bossing character most bossing characters will, are going to be pretty much set to go with just a few exalts investment, be it if we're talking about a minion build or even better than that, a miner. Miners are one of my favorite because they actually have the range uh, advantage and they have front-loaded damage, which means they can insta-phase things, with, uh, which means they basically don't need to invest into defenses. Now, of course, I'll be making a video at some point in the league about my uh, minor league starter, which is what I'll be starting up next league. I've already decided that I was going to boss skill for next league initially. Uh... So how do you actually make this happen? Well, it's actually very simple. You've got a few different options here. The usual way to do this would have been that you would actually go ahead and uh, you would skip the whole Guardians, right? You would actually skip the whole Guardians and you would actually just go straight to Shaper. By buying the Shaper set, right, which is one of each of the pieces which drop from the Guardians, you would just do the Shaper set. Whatever you drop, you sell buy another shaper set go again go again go again right and you would do the same thing with elder you wouldn't actually worry about fighting these elder guardians whatsoever you would go straight to elder and then eventually uber elder once you've got you know fragments for uber elder from elder and from shaper but this meta has changed drastically with the addition of Mer uh of uh, maven and the whole ninth atlas tree or whatever the middle one so this is why this is so incredibly strong. Well, this is something that obviously I'm not discovering here. This is known by a lot of people, but I just want to, you know, uh, still refresh your memory. Or if you've never heard about this and, or you haven't heard of the Uncharted Realms yet, essentially how you unlock the Uncharted Realms is that you need to do one of the invitations, which you can see right now, which is going to go uh, into the loop that I'm about to mention as to why the meta has drastically changed. So first off, uh, you get these little nodes here, you get three of them whenever you go on this side of the tree, which is the important nodes, there's basically three of them, the rest don't really matter. You get 35% chance to get an influence basis on the Shaper, the Elder, or the Guardians. Now you get three of these nodes, which basically means every single time you kill a Guardian, or an Elder Guardian, or a Shaper Guardian, you're going to get an influence base. Remember what I said about influence bases, those high item level, good Elder, or or actually even bad elder and uh, shaper bases have a lot of value earlier on if you're the first person to get there. And when I say the first person, I mean like before the vast majority of the crowd, right? Next, remnants of the past. Uh, pretty, pretty good. Unique bosses have a 3% chance to drop an elder um, guardian map. So it's not amazing. It's about a 6% chance basically if you add shaper and elder. Which means every like 13, 14 maps or whatever, you're going to be, uh, or 15 maps, you're going to be getting an extra Elder map or Shaper map. Now this adds up to be a decent amount of currency, but it's nothing to write home about. It's just a nice little bonus, uh, which I'll get to in a second when I talk about the strategy of how to make this happen. Alright, next we have Guardians Aid. Now this is quite juicy. Uh, Shaper and Elder Guardians are healed and joined by an ally on first reaching 33% life. So that means that you're fighting a Guardian, you get it to 33% life, he goes away, he comes back full health, and with an ally. So if you're farming, Min uh, you're fighting Minnow, he goes, he goes out of the arena, he comes back and he's joined by, for example, Hydra. Right Now they're both full health, you have to fight them both at once. But what's juicy here is allies have a chance to drop their unique items and fragments. So that means remember all those crazy good items, like those uniques that are super, super expensive at the start of a league that I was talking about? These allies are basically 
uh, they can drop these unique items and fragments, which means that every single time you do a guardian map, be it Shaper or Elder, you're doing essentially two of them, which is absolutely insane. Uh, that's like the absolute juicer. And you also have Gaze into the Abyss, which is a nice little bonus as well. Uh, Elder has an additional 10% chance to drop a Watcher's Eye, which means, you know, it's not crazy, but 10% more will add up over the course of a league. But the real kicker here is the Shaper drops three additional Shaper items. You got to remember those Shaper amulets that I was talking about. Shaper quivers are really good. Uh, shaper chess pieces are pretty good. There's a lot that goes into this. A lot of these bases, uh, Shaper rings even, a lot of these bases, like I said, are worth a lot at the start of the league. And three additional bases is huge. So what you're going to want to do, let's talk about how to set up this strategy and how you're actually going to league start from that miner, that minion build or whatever, and how you're going to transition and actually start doing this. So the way this works is basically you're going to have to unlock the Uncharted Realms. So what you need to do to unlock this is basically get the icon up here, which means uh, Maven is going to witness the boss, which by the way, is going to make these boss significantly harder. So you might want to consider running the map white, uh, which means don't even transmute it, don't alc it, just run it white. All you care about is the boss at the end it's going to pay off more than the entire cost of the map by just the fragment alone. So you're never losing money on these maps. It doesn't really matter if you're running them white and you're not getting anything. By the way, don't full clear these maps. Just rush straight to the boss. Okay? So once you've made your character, you've decided you're going to play a minor, a minion build, whatever it is, right? You are going to go ahead and uh, basically uh, need to uh, get one of these invitations, right? Uh, I don't think I have any left, actually. I think I might have sold them all. But you're going to drop invitations, which are pretty common, actually, when you're killing these endgame bosses. The invitation is basically your, something you're going to be able to do, which is you're going to fight all of these bosses at once. Now, it does say all at once, but it's not really at once. It's like two at a time. Um, so you're going to fight two of them. Two more come out. If you're able to kill them all, it's really, really easy. Quite honestly, I do it on my cast on crit character. I've done it. And this build doesn't even have a life flask. It doesn't have any damage because it's a pure mapping build. And it can still do it, right? These these encounters are not that hard. The only one that's really, really hard, I guess, is the Breach one. The Breach one is absolutely insane. Uh, but fortunately for us, we can actually skip it. The ones that you're going to want to do is the uh, Elder Guardian, Shaper Guardian, and then the Distant Memories. Those are the three easiest ones. They can be done on very little budget, and that's going to unlock six points, which is going to allow you to take all the juicer nodes, because the rest, like I said, is not something we care about a whole lot when it comes to uh, doing these uh, th this this whole uh, boss farming loop. So how the loop goes is that you do, you, you do four Elder Guardians, right? You do the, um, you do the actual invitation then you do the four shaper guardian you do the invitation then you do shaper then you do elder then you do uber elder that's basically your loop that you're going to do and you're going to be able to do this loop literally if you're playing a true uh boss killing character as early as the second day of the league you really don't need a lot of investment you can do uber elder on a tabula on a minor now this will require you to practice and actually get the mechanics of the fight down but trust me it can be done i've done it myself uh, I used to do Uber Elder in my practice runs on a five link tremor rod with no chest piece equipped. I had a Combs Heart, but I would just literally take it off to do practice. And I was doing this with sub 4000 HP. Like it's really not that hard if you actually understand the mechanics uh, and you stack proper defensive layers so you don't get hit. Because like I said, 4000 HP, anything that hits you is pretty much just going to kill you. But miners have that front loaded damage, you know, which makes it. Uh, so much more easy because you can basically just inf insta phase everything. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much what you're going to do. You're going to buy the maps. You're not going to buy like regular maps. Like I said, you can ignore the entirety of the whole Atlas mechanic. You're just going to buy uh, the actual Shaper uh, Guardian maps or Elder Guardian maps. Run those. You can run them white with the uh, Maven on. Get your fragment. Get your uniques. You know, get that juice. Then do the invitation. Then do Shaper, Elder, Rinse, and Repeat. You can even sell the Uber Elder Fragments if you don't want to run Uber Elder because that's where, I guess you could say, there's a lot more uh, RNG that's going to be involved and are you going to make your money back or not? Shaper and Elder, you're never, ever, ever going to lose money on. These Elder Guardians, Shaper Guardians, never, ever, ever going to lose money on. Uber Elder, on the other hand, there is a, not going to say a high chance, but there's always a possibility that you get nothing back and considering the price of the sets at the early start of the league, it's it's pretty risky. So what you can do is sell those actual elder 
our uber elder fragments and make money off of those as well on top of everything else that you're getting so if you do the math on this and you're starting to realize holy crap there's so many like different stages at which i can make money where these items are absolutely insanely expensive at the start of a league that's how it adds up to be three mirrors in four days completely solo player no help no trader and he actually linked to me these three mirrors on the fourth day of the league i was too lazy to go through my vods but if you went through the entire vod of the fourth day of the league uh, at some point you would actually see him link me the mirrors and I, I i actually like moused over them on on stream so i know for a fact that this is actually something that the guy was able to do and i mean it's pretty clear that he was boss killing he was he was very transparent about that uh, but figuring out how he actually did it is not very complicated once you know that he was boss killing. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, this is definitely going to be one of the less gray area type of insane farming you can do. Obviously, the caveat is that this is only viable for the first, you know, very small portion of the league. Uh, but if you're able to, you know, get some practice in, get to maps within 5-6 hours, and play a build which is very bad at clearing but has insane single target... Then you don't care about the clear because like i said it's all about the boss skills it's all about those juicy uniques those elder bases those shaper bases that's where you're gonna make all of your money so thank you to my patron for the support thanks to johnny michael clues is rashi alero guy kona jw player scott justin alex ollie matt kevin hayden bitizen and axel hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace